Suicide six. I was just out there today. We just had 10 inches of fresh snow, and you would not believe the energy out there. It all started 80 years ago with a man called Bunny. And so our story begins. Suicide six, a little ski hill and an unassuming lodge. But look a little closer and you will find that it is one of the more extraordinary places in the world. Wallace Bunny Bertram. He was a Dartmouth man, a perfectionist. He was enterprising and creative, full of vim and vigor. I think it's been, it'd be 80 years ago that dad started the ski area here. It's 80 years now. And I think he'd be pretty, um, pretty amazed. He would. Suicide Six was started by Bunny Bertram, but he had worked on the other side, Mervyn, the other side of the hill, which was Gilbert's Hill, and Gilbert's Farm had the first uphill conveyance for skiing in the whole United States. And he always said it was his Yankee ingenuity. And after things got a little established at Gilbert's Hill, they found that the hill wasn't steep enough. They wanted to go faster, so they looked for a steeper hill. You tell the story about Bunny walking you know, along the hillside with a topographical map stopping at Hill 6 and someone said to ski that would be suicide. And my grandmother got together with Bunny Bertram and some others and they created Suicide 6 right here. So this is where it started in the gully long time ago. The gully was a family situation and we kept adding to it an amazing array of people passed through here over the years. I was born just down the road from here and uh, lived across the street when I was growing up and uh, skied on this hill since I was able to walk. And when we have a snowstorm, Bunny would get some of the local kids from around here to go out and sidestep some of the trails and in return he'd let us ski for free. I have to tell you something. That rope toe seemed to be about that big around. You could barely get your fist to your tooth. I was a kid, and you'd hang on to this thing, and you'd grit your teeth, and you'd try to get to the top of this hill six. At about one o'clock in the afternoon, if there were some really good skiers around, they'd all start gathering here at the lodge. And then they would yell, all kids off. And suddenly that mercury would start winding up until it got going 40 miles an hour. And so what these great skiers would do They'd ride that rope toe right up the hill to, toward the lodge, and there was a, and still is, quite a bump back there. And they would launch off of it. <laughs> There's a rope toes are a challenge all of their own. It was probably the first year the Palma was in here, I think it was 54, started riding the Palma. A bunny would be at the, the helm of the Palma, and for the little kids, he'd, he'd hold the Palma taut for a while and then let it go, and you'd get skyrocketed five feet off the ground. And Saturday and Sunday were each good for a couple of fractures and maybe three or four sprains and whatever. Training and education were paramount to Bunny. He pioneered the first NASTAR type races, developed the first certification test for ski instructors, and installed the first pommel lift in New England. In talking about all the children skiing here, that continues my father's legacy. In 1934, the same year Bunny built his famous rope tow, Lawrence Rockefeller took as his bride Mary French, a Woodstock girl and the granddaughter of the great conservationist Frederick Billings. Lawrence said that his interest in Woodstock flowed simply from the fact that it was Mary's home. His active participation in the shaping of Woodstock's future grew naturally from their shared interests and their love of the outdoors. He firmly believed that landscape and townscape must be considered together, that one could not be preserved without the other. So it made perfect sense that Lawrence would buy Suicide Six from Bunny Bertram in 1961. He went on to purchase and rebuild the Woodstock Inn, and a wonderful new era was born for Woodstock and for Suicide Six. Lawrence ended up here because of Mary Rockefeller. When he and Mary bought the mansion from the family. He didn't come here to, with the intentions of buying the Woodstock Inn and from the Beach family and, and all of that. That just, and he didn't, certainly didn't plan to buy the Country Club and Suicide Six. That just all evolved. Lawrence brought his passion of conservation, but also he married Mary, uh, who was extremely special and, and her legacy with her family 
and protecting the farm and the culture of Vermont, uh, how it's explained now today for our current generation and future generations, is just amazing. You, you know, he was contagious. He, you just, you spend a little time with him, he was soft-spoken. I should have learned a few things from him, you know. But seriously, he had a way of saying, what will it do for the community? Of course, being a good lift attendant, I asked him for his pass. I'd never met him before. <laughs> and he told me he didn't, didn't have a pass, but he had just gotten his picture taken, and he, he would have it the next day. And he did. <laughs> Lawrence Rockefeller was a special person. Um, he had a vision for hotels. He had a vision of how the world should be and how should we em embrace the environment and really enjoy what we have today. The thing about Suicide Six, uh, when, when Rock Resorts bought it, uh, they wanted to make it more of a family, give it more of a family reputation. They took the suicide out and just called it Six. It didn't work. And some jerk in Woodstock changed the name of Suicide Six. Can you imagine the most famous ski area in America where it all started and some guy there? And of course, I never admitted it was me. During those early days, clubs, races, and institutions that exist even to this day were conceived and created. The Ski Runners program is unique in that it's, it's, it's tailored towards skiers of all different levels and it starts at uh, a community level. Where we bring all the local elementary school students who are interested in learning how to ski. Everything from children who have never seen skis a day before in their life to kids who were born with skis on their feet. I love the way that they sort of create an environment where you can really practice really well. The part where we get you to go really fast. I'm, I'm built for speed. It's the time where you get to connect with, with people who are experiencing this for the first time and you get to connect with the people who did it 30 years ago and now they're bringing their kids or even their grandkids and you know that just ties into our whole love of skiing history and the history of Suicide Six. Ski well the Fisk Trophy race is really spectacular. It's, it's gone for 80 consecutive years here. It's the longest standing race in the United States. Well the Fisk part of that is Muddy Fisk, that's my grandmother. And sure enough, what she did was that she bought a special cup early on, and she developed this race with Bunny, and they ran it. It's amazing, the Fisk Trophy race and that slalom course, when you talk to ski racers around the country, they tell you it's one of the best slalom courses they've ever raced on. The course is definitely a challenge, which is why people come here. That's why I just love the small ski areas in Vermont. And I, I think this is one of the coolest ones. It has a lot of character. It's a lot of fun every time I come here. It's one of my fav favorite places in the world to come to. Well, the Special Olympics, uh, Winter Olympics, come here every single year, and we're blessed that they chose Woodstock as a central location in the state of Vermont. I think what Special Olympics is all about, it brings the awareness, not just to the kids who are involved in it, but to everybody who's associated with it, that everybody can achieve something in life. And if you have a disability, it doesn't matter. Well, we wanted to make sure that Suicide Six lives on for the community forever and really follow Lawrence's vision of providing that ski area for the community. So what we did is really replace Chair One. Chair One was the lifeblood of the ski area. The quad chair is the next stage in the evolving life of Suicide Six. People come back year after year. We have generations of families that have skied here. Everything that we've done and all the decisions that we make are with the future in mind, but also um, you know, with the idea of sustainability um, and conservation and managing the forest in the best possible way. Uh, so they will be here and it will be preserved for generations to come. But there's something about Suicide Six that makes me want to come back year after year. You know, we've got a lot of guys that have been with me since I started. They really are the ones that make it all happen. It's the new things I see at the end and being out here with the new lift and it, I think these guys are just waving a flag and making it better than ever. This is, it's, it's a great lifestyle. It really it is. is. Great you'll, lifestyle. you'll never get rich, but you'll be rich in smiles and, and people. It's the best family-friendly mountain I've ever seen. It's like a family and everybody cares about each other and we help each other. And, you know, there's some of us that have just, I can't imagine being somewhere else. I'd miss everybody here. I think people flock here because the heritage, the history, the, the memories that people have, they want to pass them on to the other generations. I love Suicide Six. You know, of course it's going to be here forever, you know. People come here to recreate, to get in touch with life 
with reality with one another. And that's what happens here. Hopefully we're developing a legacy here that will last for years to come. It's amazing to be part of a resort with this legacy around it that has the stories to tell, the history part of it, and then the opportunities to move into the future and be able to do even so much more. Gary and Tim are bringing a, a new vitality and uh, very, I'm, I'm very excited. Um, I think they're doing wonderful things um, for the community. You can let your kids run free and you don't have to worry about them because every trail leads back to home. Come on 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 home. All the years I ever skied the mountain, I've never skied the face. Oh, you big baby. <laughs>